Welcome back to another iDoctor UK video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the battery on the iPhone XR, as well as resetting the battery health back to 100%. When we open up settings and head down to battery, we can see that we've got the service notification and then the battery's on 81% health. To start this repair, we're going to power down the phone and then take a Pentalobe screwdriver to remove the two bottom screws. I'll then take a single-sided razor blade and create a small gap between the screen bezel and the chassis, then gently pry upwards to lift the bottom of the screen away from the chassis. Now that we've got a small gap, I'll insert a plastic guitar pick, just a couple of millimeters, enough so that we can slide it up the edges of the device to separate the screen away from the phone. We can lift the bottom of the phone, give it a little wiggle, and then the phone opens like a book from the back cover. To prevent the screen from falling over while we're working inside the phone, take a heavy object so that you can rest it. An important step before we start removing the screen or the battery is to soak the underneath of the battery in some isopropyl alcohol on the top, the bottom and the sides. And this will allow the alcohol to sink in so that when the screen is removed, the tabs should be quite easy to pull out. Take a try with the screwdriver now and remove the three screws holding down this L-shaped bracket underneath the two display cables. Then use tweezers to lift out the shield. Use a plastic prying tool, disconnect the battery from the motherboard and isolate power from the device. Then taking your tri-wing screwdriver again, remove these two screws that hold down the screen connectors. Remove the shield with the tweezers and then use the plastic prying tool to disconnect the screen again. There's three more tri-wing screws up the top here and one crosshead screw. Remove those so that we can disconnect the cable for the ear speaker and front sensor. Now that all the cables are disconnected, we can take the screen away and store it safely for later. We'll let that alcohol soak in a little bit longer, giving us a little bit of time to remove the old dust and moisture resistant seal. These should peel off quite easily pull it gently away from the chassis. And once you've removed all the leftover glue, just add a few drops of isopropyl alcohol to the edges and gently brush it to remove any dirt, dust and sticky stuff that's left over. This one's particularly dirty in this top corner, so I'm just gonna use the uh, tweezers to scrape off whatever it is that's, uh, that's sticking around. It looks like makeup. That should have allowed us plenty of time now for the alcohol to soak in underneath the battery. So I'm gonna take some straight tweezers now and begin peeling away the tape that holds down the, the battery. This can be awkward. And usually, whenever I'm recording this, the battery tabs will snap. If you're familiar with this, you will already know about that. The first one came out quite nicely. I'm hoping that the rest of them will come out as well as that. Once you've got a sort of grip on the adhesive, you can just wiggle it from side to side and it just helps it ease out a little bit better and seems to reduce the risk of snapping it. That's two out successfully. Now we'll move down to the bottom because there's another two sticky tabs down here. If these ones don't come out, once you've got the top ones out, it does make it a bit easier. You can pry it up quite easy. That's what we call the pry of shame. You see me wiggle it from side to side. Unfortunately, I think this one's going to be a snapper. From the X onwards, they've become increasingly difficult to remove these. But if you can get those the two out from the top safely, then it it does come out quite easily. Just lifting it up, it doesn't bend the battery or anything. It's fairly safe to pull it out that way. But it does leave behind some adhesive. It happens to the best of us. We have to do the pride of shame. Anyway, remove the adhesive that was left over. And if you need to, you can take a little scrapey, chisely sharp blade and, and get the last of the adhesive out without doing any damage to any flex cables, of course. Now that our battery's removed, we can put the chassis to one side with the screen and we're going to take the old battery now and begin removing the battery's BMS board down here. I always find that the easiest way to do this is to make sure that all the old adhesive's out of the way. I'm going to take the edge of the sharp tweezers and begin peeling back the adhesive, what covers up the battery BMS. You can skip this step, but it will come up with a battery error on models iPhone XR XS onwards, and it is best to do it this way to keep it original. 
Once the first layer of adhesive is removed, you need to remove the plastic sheathing what goes over the top as well. It helps to add a couple of drops of alcohol on there because it is stuck down with some double-sided tape and you can unravel the battery's BMS just like that. There's a little bit more tape to remove to reveal the battery terminals. Now I'm going to take a little battery jig like this one and I don't use the grooves that are already cut out. I usually just use the edge of it there to rest on. Now I'm going to use one of those chiselly tools again and cut between the anode and cathode trying not to damage the little flaps that hold it down. This battery is now done with and can be discarded but we need to do a little bit of work to tidy this. The easiest way to prepare the BMS now is to fold back the little tabs then we need to remove any of the leftover anode and cathode. They come away quite easily with the, with the chiselly tool. Its actual name is a number 17 exacto blade, but I always call it a chisely tool. But once they're away, we can take a small file and just remove any of the remaining spot welds that are on there. It just wants to be as flat as you can possibly get it. Now that that's prepared, we're going to get our new battery. And this is the IP9 core battery from iPods for you. And what you'll notice is that these ones come without a BMS already attached. You've got the adhesive to stick on there, the cell itself, and look, you've just got raw battery terminals there, which means that we can just cut them down and weld them straight onto the BMS. I'm going to show you a little trick to make sure that they weld perfect as well. Then you've got a couple of little stickers and the plastic sheathing in the packet as well. To make sure it's exactly the right length, you can just hold up the old battery to the new and then take your cutters and chop it off in the same place. Now, the terminals on these, one of them is a nickel terminal and the other one's aluminium. The aluminium one is very soft, that's the positive. That's the anode. It's very soft metal. If you start welding that, it'll just blow up and it just turns into nothing. The easiest way to get around that, some batteries, the cap ones that we've used in other videos they they already have a little nickel strap attached to them but if your battery doesn't it's very easy to just get a small piece of nickel plate cut it down to the size that you want it place it onto the terminal and then we're going to use the welder to secure it into place before we secure it onto the bms i've switched things up a little bit i've got the real life mini portable battery welding tool the ends of this are a bit beat up now, but it's it seems to be a much more reliable welder. And I've got it on setting number four. So I just attach it onto there. And you're gonna see that it'll it'll it actually does really nice welds this one. We'll get a good few welds on there to make sure that that's not going anywhere. It's fully automatic this welding tool, and it works really nicely. Now you can see that we've got that small plate on there. That's going to weld much better onto our BMS. Pop it on there. We're just going to offer up the original battery management board. I'll just press onto it a little bit so that I can fold over the little flaps and then push it down to make sure that it's secure into place. We'll do the same now on the other side to secure the cathode into place. Once they're lined up though, we can take our welding tool I'm going to apply a lot of pressure with one of the terminals on the battery welder and then secure it, try not slip and secure it into place. Make sure there's plenty of welds on there and that it gets a good connection. And then repeat the same onto our other terminal cathode. This one usually sticks much better because it's nickel. Make sure there's plenty of welds and then take it off. We're just going to do a little pull test to make sure that it's secured and that feels really good. I'm pulling quite hard on that. There's no way to show that in video, but I'm, I'm giving that a good tug and it's not going anywhere. But now that that's secure, we're going to get the rest of the kit now, a piece of double sided tape, and I'm going to stick that onto the terminals just here. Now that that's on, we can fully fold over the battery, sorry, the BMS and make sure that that sits in the little slot for it down there. Now I'm going to attach the little plastic cover on. Now it comes down to personal preference. I always fold this bit over first and then the flaps over the sides and I find that it sticks better. 
and you could barely tell that that's been there. Uh, should we say tampered with? You can't tell. Look at that. Professional job. Now that that's ready, we're going to make sure that it works in our phone first. And it, this sort of just reactivates the battery because it, sometimes you'll find the next steps don't always work unless the battery's been plugged back into the phone. So I'm going to plug it in. And the way that I'm going to boot it is through a lightning cable. So once the battery and the screen is reattached, we can just plug it back in here. And then the phone's going to turn on, but it's going to come on saying the same thing as it said before because we've not updated the battery health information yet. So now that our phone's come back on, I'll just show you that Obviously, we've got the face ID message because the front sensor is not connected. It still says service and it still says 81%. So the next step to make sure that this calibrates back to 100% is to disconnect the battery and remove the new one. And before we reprogram it, what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug in an aftermarket battery so that it tricks the phone into forgetting the old battery health effectively. So this step helps the phone forget the old battery health and it is going to come up with a warning that the battery has been changed but it's not a known part or non-genuine part i can't remember exactly what it says but i'll show you now anyway so now that it's back on we we'll just have to wait a few moments and it'll not tell us that it's 81 percent anyway there we go we've got the unknown part unable to verify this iphone has a genuine apple battery health information is not available for this battery so the really shitty move what apple do is put this stupid notification on whether you used a genuine battery an aftermarket battery doesn't matter it's purely software locked um, to limit functions after a replacement there's no real need for it because other batteries work absolutely fine it just removes that feature which is quite an important feature although a little bit gimmicky i would say anyway we remove the aftermarket battery now and we're just going to put the phone to one side and we're going to get the JCID V1S tool and it's got a battery board attached to this one. I'm going to plug this into 8 to XS Max just there. Now this is the Mr. Wormwood from Matilda moment where we rewind the health back to 100% if you're familiar with that scene. The numbers go down. Watch your speedometer. And you also need to clear the cycles. You can see that this has uh, 1,320 chargers, but in a moment it's going to get rid of those and it'll zero those off. So we've got cycle count at zero now. So that means that this battery is ready to be reinstalled into our phone. Because this is the last time that I'm going to, I'm not going to take it out of the phone anymore. So I'm going to install the battery adhesive. Make sure that this is stuck down well, because sometimes you can peel the pink sheet off and it takes this adhesive with it and makes a mess really. Fold that over. Fold that over. Now our battery is prepared and ready to stick back into our phone, which is just here. Sorry, after I stick this down, but before I seal it up, I'm just going to turn it on one more time to make sure that this battery is now back to 100%. Now let's open up and go to settings one last time. Battery, you can see that the service notification has gone there and we're back to 100% maximum capacity. Now that we've done that, we're going to disconnect the battery one last time so that we can seal up the device and return this phone to its owner. And we're going to get, these are original seals. These are really nice. These pinky clear ones. These are the best ones. Available from Replace Base. Just line it up. I always start in the top corner and then the rest of it will follow suit as long as one one edge is in place and then i just use the back of the tweezers to make sure that it sticks down real nice because you don't want to be peeling it off and find that after it's coming away because that can suck especially when you've already screwed everything back together it looks like we've got good sticking on if you find that it does lift just Peel it off and run your back your tweezers a little bit on there. And that's looking good now. All that remains is to reattach this screen, starting off with the touch, then the LCD, and then the ear speaker up the top. Now we'll start re-screwing things back into place. 
starting off with our little shield up the top here. I see, I always open up a, a XR, what's been messed around with before, and nobody seems to put this little clip right. It just slides over the top there. And then I always put the cross edge screw back in first because then the rest are all the same size, so you can't make any mistakes reinstalling the screws. And then we've got the three triwing screws in each corner of this little shield. Now I'll move down to this little bracket here. Just making sure it's in place with the tweezers. And then the two triwing screws hold that into place. Now finally, we can reconnect the battery and get that last little L-shaped bracket into place and secure down the three triwing screws now. Once they're secured, it's always really good practice to do a full check over the phone to make sure that you've not missed any screws, that the battery's secured down properly and there's nothing out of place. It can be quite common for the XR and the 11 series for this little bracket to slide out, so just make sure that that's secure, which in our case it is. So once the checks are complete, we can fold the screen back down, re-secure the screen into the top of the device, and then work your way down, giving it a little squeeze to secure the screen back to the chassis. Never, ever, ever forget to put these two pentalobe screws back into the bottom of the phone because the next technician that looks at the phone are going to instantly cast serious judgment upon you if you don't put those in. You just know straight away if they're missing, you're going to have a good time with the phone. Once they're secured into place, we can turn it in for the final time and I'm going to perform some system checks through M360 because I believe this phone is one that we bought from a customer ready to sell on in our new store. Anyway, we're back to 100%. I better prove that I've not broke face ID by opening up the phone now, am I? Woohoo, hello. But yeah, look, see, working, promise. Anyway, that's how to replace the battery on the iPhone XR. Thank you for watching and see you next time.